Welcome to the TechMind Factory video blog. In this video, we are going to talk about Azure Active Directory B2C with external authorization store. And of course, before we jump into demo, I would like to talk a little bit about theoretical aspects. And of course, I encourage you to read the full blog post on my techmindfactory.com blog. Okay, so let's start. Just a short reminder, Azure Active Directory Business to Customer, so B2C, is identity as a service available in the Microsoft Azure Cloud. And one of the key functionalities that it provides is user authentication. So we can securely authenticate our users using their preferred identity providers. Of course, they can sign in using standard approach, so email and password, but they can also sign in using their social media accounts like Twitter, Facebook or Google. And of course, we will not talk about all the functionalities here in the Azure Active Directory B2C because this is not the topic of this video. But I encourage you to check other video about Azure Active Directory B2C on my channel here on YouTube. And one of the functionalities that is not provided directly by Azure Active Directory B2C is authorization mechanism. So let me stop for a minute here and describe the difference between authentication and authorization. Let me put an example. There is a hotel, let's say, and we are a guest. So at the hotel reception, we would like to check in. So we will be asked to provide some document, some ID or let's say passport. So the person at the reception would like to confirm that we are who we are. So in this case, they will be asking me to provide password and um, and uh, prove that I'm Daniel. And right now, uh, once they verify this uh, passport, uh, I'm authenticated. So at the hotel reception, a uh, person knows that I'm Daniel and I'm the person who reserved this uh, specific room in the hotel. And right now, uh, after authentication, there is uh, there can be authorization. So I will get a key, but key only to open a specific room in the hotel. So I will not be able uh, to open other rooms in the hotel with this key. And this is authorization. So after authentication, after proofing who, who, I, who, who am I, I will, uh, I will be given a key to a specific room and I will be able only to open this specific room. If I go to other rooms and I will try to open them, uh, I will fail. So that's authorization. And right now when talking about the B2C, uh, authorization is not supported. Probably yet. So we have to uh, provide some external uh, store and uh, external mechanism to provide authorization in our applications. And this is possible. Why? Because we can integrate Azure Active Directory B2C with uh, external stores and, and external APIs. So during the user login or registration, we can call external service. We can confirm some information. Let's say that we can, we can uh, get additional um, attributes of user and then we can return those attributes in the uh, JOT token. And of course, to do it, we have to also integrate uh, our application with Azure Active Directory B2C. And this is where Microsoft Identity Platform uh, becomes. So uh, in this case, if we would like to integrate our application with Azure Active Directory B2C, we have to uh, use something what is called uh, MSAL, so Microsoft Authentication Library. And using this Microsoft Authentication Library, we can provide a, a easy way for users to authenticate. And in this uh, video, we are going to talk about Microsoft Identity Platform libraries together with authorization mechanism in the Azure Active Directory B2C. Of course, custom mechanism. So this is the solution architecture, which I would like to describe. This is something what we will uh, go through using the source code too. So what we can see here, there is a simple web application and there is a user and user would like to sign in. And right, of course, uh, right now, this web application is secured by Azure Active Directory B2C. So uh, all the users uh, will have to uh, sign in first to access some functionalities of the application. And of course, without authorization mechanism, 
every user can access all the functionalities in the web application. But if we would like to restrict access only to specific users, uh, there, there has to be authorization mechanism. So we have to decide to which parts, which functionalities a specific user with specific uh, um, permission will have access. So we can we can put an example. There are let's say three groups: uh, employees, um, employees, managers, and global admins. So so employees will have access only to some basic functionalities. Managers will have uh, access to more functionalities, more advanced, probably about analytics in the company. Uh, and of course, global admin will have access to um, every functionality in the web application. And right now, when we sign in. Um, uh, Azure Active Directory B2C provide mechanism that uh, we can use to integrate with external APIs and stores. And in this case, as you can see on the right side of this diagram, there is Azure Functions used. Uh, so the service, serverless service available in the Azure Cloud. And we are using Azure Functions here to call Azure SQL Database. So in the Azure SQL Database, we have information about authorization. So there we will have uh, groups, so like I mentioned, like employees, uh, admins, uh, or, or managers. Uh, and of course, we will also have another table where we will store information about authorization data for users. So let's say that for me, for Daniel, uh, I, will, I will have uh, employee role. So I will uh, have access only to limited, um, uh, limited amount of functionalities in the web application. So to make it simple, in this flow, once user signs in, Azure Active Directory B2C will call Azure Function. Azure Function will retrieve all the groups for a specific user from the Azure SQL database. And these authorization groups will be included in the JOT token that will be returned to the web application. And then web application, based on the groups that are in, included in the token, web application can decide whether, um, uh, whether a specific user should have access to a specific functionality of the web app or not. Okay, but that was about the theory. And at the, b before we begin, I would like to also discuss the components used. So here we use Azure Active Directory B2C, Azure Functions, Azure SQL Database, and Azure Web App Service available in the Azure Cloud. So right now, let's jump into the demo and let's uh, discuss a custom authorization store connected with Azure Active Directory B2C. Here is Visual Studio 2019 and Identity Developer Template solution that is available on my GitHub. Of course, all the links will be provided in the video description. So on the left side, we can see SQL Server Object Explorer, and we can see that there is Authorization Store DB. And inside this uh, uh, SQL database, we have two tables. There is Authorization Groups table and User Authorization Groups. So let's see the data in Authorization Groups. So I will click View Data, and here we can see that there are two groups. We can see that there is employee and direct manager. And those two groups uh, have ID assigned, of course. And then in the user authorization groups table, if we see the data, we can see that there are three columns, of course, identity column. And there are two important columns, user ID and group ID. So it means that in this uh, user authorization groups table, we will store all the groups to which user is assigned. So this is the functionality that is not available currently in the Azure Active Directory B2C. So we, we cannot create something like groups in the B2C right now. So this is the store uh, to keep all the groups for the users. And of course, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, information about those groups will be included in the JOT token that will be returned to the web application. Okay, so right now, let me close this SQL Server Object Explorer and let me launch uh, a web application. This is the sample ASP.NET Core web application, Razor Pages, and this application is integrated with the Azure Active Directory using Microsoft Identity Web uh, Library, 
which is available in a preview at the moment of recording this video. And on the right side, as you can see, there is sign up, sign in button. And there is also a tab called private content. If I click this private content, application will ask me to sign in. And here we can see the login page of the B2C. And here I have to provide my credentials. And I can click sign in. And right now, what is happening? Of course, Azure B2C called Azure Functions and Functions called Azure SQL Database and retrieved all the groups for a specific user. And here we can see that there is access denied because I'm not assigned to a specific group, which we will uh, discuss in a moment. But let's click sign out and let's, let's try to sign in using another account. Okay, and right now we can see that we have access to the private content. So this is about authorization that specific some specific users cannot access private content tab. And this is there is access denied displayed. But some of them uh, assigned to a specific groups can access this private content tab. Okay, so let's review the source code. So now let's discuss what's happening in the source code. In the web application project, Let's open core folder, dependency injection, and authorization service collection extensions. And let's discuss what's happening here. First of all, uh, we have to register I authorization group service. And let's open this class here. What we can see in this class, what we are doing here, we are calling Azure function to get all the authorization groups because we will need them in the web application. So here we will retrieve all the uh, groups available in the table in the SQL database in Azure. And right now, once we uh, retrieve all those groups, so let's uh, let's see what's happening here in this source code. We have uh, we have to call this authorization uh, get authorization groups method, of course, to get those groups. And once we have those groups retrieved from the SQL database, what we can, what we have to do to enable authorization, we have to call services add authorization. And here in the for each loop, for each authorization group that is available in the SQL database, we are configuring here a, a policy. So we are using options dot add policy. And here what we are doing, we are configuring uh, all the policies with the, with the group names. And here we are adding the requirements so that for instance, the, the user of a specific group, uh, th that the user would, who would like to access a specific view in the application has to have uh, a group inside Jot token. So this claim, I would say. So here, if I go to the uh, pages folder, and open private uh, private content that we saw uh, previously, we can see that here there is authorized attribute and policy is set to employee. So only uh, only users um, who have uh, uh, employee uh, group ID in the JOT token will be able to access this private content tab. So if I'm in this employee group, if I'm assigned, I will be able to, to check this content. If not, there will be access denied display. So this is crucial to mention. And of course, what is also important to mention is the fact that uh, this mechanism here, this ad authorization, uh, will, will uh, secure this access. So there will be no chance that a user without employee, uh, employee role, for instance, will be able to access this private content model. Okay, great. So right now, let me also open uh, Azure Active Directory uh, custom policies to describe what's happening there. This is the Visual Studio code and we can see three policies, trust framework base, trust framework extensions and sign up or sign in policy. And those policies are uh, custom policies from the identity experience framework uh, of the Azure Active Directory B2C. And here in the trust framework base, I declare custom attribute called extension authorization groups. And we can see that data type is string collection. So in the uh, JWT token, we will receive uh, those groups as a list. 
and right now of course we would like to also call this Azure function during uh, login process just to retrieve uh, groups for a specific user. So let's open Trust Framework Extensions policy and here we can see that there is a claims provider um, a declared get user authorization groups on login. And what is crucial to mention here is the fact that there is a service URL so here is my Azure function and uh, we would like to also send claims in body and let's discuss this part here we would like to uh, provide object id so user id to this azure function to retrieve all the groups for a specific user so that's why we have to pass this object id and then as an output claim we will get those authorization groups here and we will map those authorization groups that are returned from azure function to extension authorization groups um, attribute and at the end in the sign up or sign in policy we would like to include those authorization groups in the JOT token so that's why we have to uh, declare extension authorization groups here as an output claim of course all those policies have to be uploaded here in the identity experience framework tab in the azure portal so as we can see here under custom policies, I uploaded all those policies. So right now, once I sign in as a user, uh, there will be a call to Azure function. This Azure function will call uh, Azure SQL database, retrieve the groups for a specific users. Those groups will be included in the JOT token. And then application can decide whether user uh, should have access to a specific functionality or not. At the end, I would like to mention that all the links are available in the video description. So I encourage you to read the article on my blog related with this content and also review the source code available in the Identity Developer Templates repository on my GitHub. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to contact me either on Twitter or LinkedIn. And of course, I encourage you to visit my blog techmindfactory.com. See you in the next video.